Hey, old friend. Let's get into some interesting facts about this movie, guys. <laughs> no, wait. Let her know what she's working with. That's the way to do it in a loving way. Hey guys, welcome back to Android Vision. Don't ever trust a grown man with a puppy in the park. What'll they do next? Music to the ears of the hungry. The sizzle of a mouth-watering hamburger. Fresh, lean beef done to a golden brown. Couched in a soft bun. And garnished with garnished to, to the ears of the hungry. <laughs> Welcome to Android Vision, brought to you by the Intestinal Fortitude. Hey guys, welcome to Android Vision, your September edition, season six, September episode nine. We're just going linear here. Yeah, it's right. great. Yeah, so we're all really exhausted here because we're in this hot ass fucking trailer. And everybody's like, Ugh, and we all when ate pizza. We'll fall be here. Yes, and we all ate pizza, and we're all tired and hot. But anyways, guys, um, we have our male our camera guy here again. Hi, Preston. Hi, Shred. Hi. Hi. <laughs> That's okay. Yes. Are you I high have... tonight? No, I'm Preston. Oh, hi. Hi. Shred. Hey. Hey. <laughs> All right, guys. So tonight uh, we're going to be watching uh, 1987's Fatal Games, or 84, whatever. It, it was made in 84, released in 87. There's those weird things that, you know, I don't know. Did you get to check this one out? I Yeah, a bit of it. Yeah? Yeah. It's, it's a little rough. It. It, it gets you right here. Yeah, the javelin. <laughs> yeah, nice javelin. This is a javelin killer movie, and there's really not a whole lot original about this movie, guys. But uh, up first, guys, we're going to watch a good sportsmanship PSA. Get us in the mood for this. It's a school horror. Um, I guess we're going back to school. So, And another one of those 1980s slasher horror movies where the students are supposed to be 17, 18 oh, years yeah. old. But they all uh, are obviously in their 40s. Um, <laughs> so um, we will uh, be right back after this PSA and talk to you soon games can be a lot of fun can't they we all like to play games and to win. We all like to watch games. There's good sportsmanship. You know what that means? Watch Joe. See whether he's a good sport. Watch him get away from his guard. There he goes. Whoops, out of bounds. That's how the referee calls it, out of bounds. Joe doesn't think he stepped out of bounds. He's sure he didn't. But the referee called it. Now, wait a minute. What would a good sport do now? What would you do? Argue and refuse to give up the ball? Finally give up the ball, but make a big fuss about it? Let's hope you'd think of the first rule of good sportsmanship. Play fair. Joe does play fair. 
He accepts the referee's ruling. Then everyone can have more fun. Now the other team takes over. And Bill has the ball. Shall he try to shoot from so far away? Uh-oh, Bill sees a teammate, unguarded. He could make a basket easily. But if Bill could make it himself, what would a good sport do? What would you do? Play just for yourself? Try to be the star? Let's hope you'd remember good sportsmanship. Then you'd play your best for the team. Bill does play his best for the team. It wouldn't be much of a game if everyone played for himself. And look, two points for the team. Now, what's the score? Oh, that last basket puts Bill's team ahead. Good sportsmanship paid. And the crowd likes it. Now Bill's team will want to play extra hard to protect that lead. And the time's growing short, so Joe's team must hurry to... Oh, that's the way, Joe! Well, try again. Too bad. And now Bill's team gets the ball. There goes another chance to score. Oh, time's up. End of the game. Bill's team won. It's been fun watching the game, even for those who wanted Joe's team to win. As you might expect, Bill and his team are glad they won. And of course, Joe and his team are sad about losing. It'd be easy for them to be angry, but wait a minute. What would a good sport do? What would you do? Be angry and act up just because you've lost the game? Let's hope you'd remember good sportsmanship. Take the results well no matter whether you win or lose. Joe does take the results well. After all, he enjoyed playing and he played his best. There's always a winner and a loser. Both should enjoy the game. Joe congratulates Bill for winning. And Bill mentions how close Joe came to tying the score again. And he thinks Joe is a good sport. Next time, Bill would like to be on the same team as Joe. So the winner and the loser are both good sports and good friends. Let's remember how to be a good sport. Play fair, play your best for the team, and take the results well. Where else is good sportsmanship important? Well, Bill wants to read a special reference book Mr. Howard brought for the class. There's a list right here of those who want to read it. Wow, Bill will have to wait quite a while for that book. Joe must have the book now. And what's more, it looks as if he's finished with it. Well, maybe Joe would let his friend Bill have the book right now ahead of the others. But wait a minute. What would a good sport do? What would you do? Give the book to your special friend and make everyone else wait? No, a good sport would play fair by obeying the rules. The others who signed up should have their turns. And Bill's a good enough sport to agree. But Joe can do something for his friend. He'll let Bill study his notes on the special reading. And Bill surely appreciates that. So, by playing fair, and by doing something extra for his friend, Joe shows how good a sport he is. And everyone likes him for that. Everybody likes a good sport. Good sportsmanship is important on the street, too. Joe and Marianne are close friends, and Bill is a friend of both of them. So the three of them like to go home from school together. But it isn't easy to ride a bike as slowly as people walk. And while Bill wants to stay with his friends, he'd also like to keep on riding. But wait a minute. What would a good sport do? What would you do? Ride in circles, 
showing off, try to ride alongside them and crowd them. Bill is a good sport on the street. He tries to be considerate and think of what's best for the group. And that's rather like doing your best for the team. Everyone can have more fun when we practice good sportsmanship. When Bill arrived home, he found still another place where good sportsmanship counts. He found that it's important to be a good sport at home when... But let's see what happened. Well, at least Bill's not hurt. But what about the doll he stepped on? Oh, Ruthie's new doll. And just look at Bill's watch. Huh. But what about the doll? Bill thinks Ruth shouldn't have left the doll lying there. He thinks it's all her fault. In fact, Bill has a good mind to... But wait a minute. What would a good sport do? What would you do? Be nasty, even though you'd be ashamed of yourself for it later? Bill wants to be a good sport. This is something like losing a game. It's too late to change it. So take the results well. You'll feel better if you do. Ruth has to be a good sport too. She could blame Bill for not looking where he stepped, but it's more pleasant just to take what happens. Be a good sport. You can be proud of yourself too. So remember, whether you're at home or on the street, or in school, or playing a game. Be a good sport. Play fair. Play your best for the team or the group. Take the results well. These are the fundamentals of good sportsmanship. But good sportsmanship is more than just that. Good sportsmanship is found in your attitudes, in the way you do things, in the smile you wear. And remember, if you're a good sport, everyone can enjoy the game better. Everyone will like you better. And what's most important, you'll feel better about yourself. Are you a good sport? Hey guys, thank you for sticking with us. I hope you in, uh, enjoyed that PSA and learned something about good sportsmanship. Um, you know, don't be a don't be a sore loser. Right? You did a great job. Uh, being a sore loser? No, a great job presenting that oh, PSA. Thanks. Good job. Thanks. Oh, oh, you're good. Good, good sportsmanship. There you have it. There you go. Um, I don't really have any funny gym stories about myself other than going to school on acid and lifting weights. That was yeah. fun. I mean. I remember square dancing. Like, who thought that was a thing we needed to know? Right. do si do Yeah. do si do your partner. do si do your partner. And then you yes. all... I... Why? I, I'm i still trying to figure it out. Do they I've yet to use that, other do, than messing with other people who took square dancing. Do they still do it to this day? Square dancing? Like, in gym? Oh, I don't... I, I, I don't... I doubt it. I wouldn't think so. Like, I just don't see the point of that. It just seems like this weird thing... I, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't know either. I mean, now I would guess that they do like more probably hip hop type of dancing or. Oh, they pop and lock. Pop and lock, but square dancing is very odd to me. Yeah. So yeah, gym class. Funny story. Um, I might have told this on Android Vision before, and some of you might have heard this story. But um, so senior year of high school, I used to like to eat a lot of acid, and uh, I also used to like to ditch second period, which was homeroom at the time, okay. and that happened to be weightlifting. So that was my time to go get stoned in the morning. Like, fuck weightlifting. Coaches didn't even pay attention to the fucking kids like me anyways because they just wanted to make sure that their football players and their athletes oh, yes. got bigger. So they didn't give a fuck. 
So, uh, but the thing about weightlifting, when you do your finals in weightlifting, you have to incre- increase your max weightlifting, like by however, I don't know how many pounds, whether it be 10, 20, 30 pounds, you know? So beginning of the semester, say you're benching 45 pounds, by the end of the semester, you should be benching 100 pounds, you know? Okay. Because you're showing up to class. Yeah, Yeah. progress. And um, I did not show up ever, so I don't know how I could have benched that. I didn't do this on purpose, to be honest with you, but it was finals day, and uh, I decided to take some acid. And, uh, You're going for that participation trophy. Yeah, yeah, straight D's. It's passing, Dad. Um, so, so um, yeah, weightlifting class uh, came around. I was like, fuck. And then I remember I started tripping because I took the acid before school. And I said, fuck it, let's do it. And I'm like, before I know it, I'm fucking lifting like all kinds of weight. Like, where the fuck did this come from? I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm tripping acid. I'm feeling strong. Like, I have oh, superhuman no. strength right now. <laughs> so I like, got a fucking A in that class. No way. Yeah. Wow. Coach is like, hey, good job, blah, 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 talking to me. And I'm like, oh, thanks, man. Like, I'm just staring <laughs> at his face. No consequences. He's all, yeah, you did really good. You're going to get an A. And I was all, oh, okay, cool. Like, just completely <laughs> tripping acid. But, like, why don't you join the football team? Blah, 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 you're strong. And I'm like, oh, it's not for me. Like, <laughs> like just leave me alone. So, yeah, that's my awesome gym story from school. But up next, guys, Fatal Games. Um, yeah, we have crazy animals outside. Just let you know, barking coyotes. We have guard dogs, too. So, uh, When a killer javelin thrower kills off the members of the high school gymnastics team, the search is on to discover the killer's identity. And uh, what uh, we get at the end of the movie is not quite what it seems to be. So uh, nothing really original here. Uh, the only person of really any notification, show, uh, notification, notoriety showing in this movie is Sally Kirkland. Do you know who she is? Do you guys know who Sally Kirkland is? No. She's like some big 80s yeah. actress. I don't know. Oh. Soaps. <laughs> you know, Sally Kirkland. Oh, I see her. Yes. Um, I see the blonde hair. Yeah. Kind of an older, yep. motherly type. I don't know. Um, and um, Sean Masterson and a slew of other like has-beens that were like on soap operas and shit like that that like maybe were a side character that got killed off or something like that uh directed by michael elliott known for fatal games um also written by michael elliott known for fatal games um and that's all he did that's a big resume <laughs> yeah. i i feel like this guy most like like Kind of like the guys who did uh, Doom Asylum. Also some other movies, um, The Mutilator, a.k.a. Spring Break. Um, a lot of these guys want... There, there was a big cash-in on sl- slasher movies in the yeah. 80s. Oh, yeah. So however they got their loans, however they did this, they wanted to be like the next big Friday the 13th, the next whatever. So it's like, fuck it, let's cash into the fucking horror, sh- horror uh, slasher genre. And you never heard nothing from these guys again. Oh, yeah. It has to be. That's why there were so many of them in the 80s. So many. Tons How many different ways can they die? Javelin. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. The, 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 the uh, tool of death in this movie, the chosen one, is a fucking javelin. And boy, does, does the killer throw that javelin with uh, some might. Enough to pick up a chick and send her across half Precise the room. Precise might yeah. as well. Yeah. And... and, and uh, yeah, it's crazy, and, and and also like the 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 there's there's a lot of just weird shit in this movie, but we'll, we'll get a little bit more into that. There's not a whole lot of interesting facts about this movie because, like I said, it's just like this weird one-off fucking under the radar slasher with like weird fucking music. So, anyways, guys, uh, enjoy Fatal Games, and we'll be right back. Mm-hmm. 